Greetings, YouTube. And I'm probably going to be pissing some of you off today because I'll be calling your favorite rappers trash. So basically, today's video is going to be 10 rap songs I love from rappers I hate. Or to be less harsh, you could say songs I like from rappers I don't like. So yeah, and keep in mind the terms good, bad, are subjective, it's all my opinion. And you don't have to agree. That's the beautiful thing about this world. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Now, I just want to do a quick shout out to CV CDTV Productions, who has done, I think, three or four videos like this. Um, he gave me the idea, and I figured, why not? Because even though these rappers, I hate almost all of them, they still have at least one or two songs I find enjoyable. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. So much stage to like so Okay, so I find 645AR's squeaky rapping voice to be god awful, yet somehow it works here. I don't know how. First of all, the beat goes very hard. Um, it was produced by Full Tech, who I think is a pretty good producer, who just happens to work with a lot of terrible artists. But, over this beat, 645AR, his voice isn't that bad. I don't know if it's because it's one of the most composed flows he has, if it's not auto-tuned to the point where it sounds like someone's screeching on a violin. And, it's mostly understandable... And there's like a hint of raspiness in his voice that adds a little bit of aggression. And yeah, I don't know what it is about it, but somehow, some way, his squeaky voice isn't that bad. It's not, I can listen to this song and actually enjoy it, and his voice doesn't hinder it any. Like I said, I have no clue how, but it works. It just works. I came up now, about to give him hell. Cut from a different fabric, mine's from Chanel. I got my cash right on my water like a well. It ain't work out from my last girl. Baby, that's a well. Last time somebody. I guess Kid Boo took my advice. Now, if you remember months ago, I think back in January, when I made a video going over the top 10 best Kid Boo songs, I said that he was at his most original when he did this kind of mix between like melodic soundcloud rap mixed with a little bit of punk and surprisingly he's been sticking to that style more recently um and speed demon which actually came out about a week ago is his most polished version of that sound and it's his most original sound he may still be copying another artist but Right offhand, I can't think of anyone who's copying. Like, I, when I hear this, I genuinely think of Kid Boo. And I really like the melodies. I was originally going to put Impatient or Chicken Soup, which came from his Blind for Love 3 EP, which is probably his most solid uh, project. I mean, it only has three nice tracks, and it's only seven tracks long, but that's still better than some of his other projects. Um, he has been working with this style more and trying to perfect this style, and yeah, I think he's actually on the right track to having a, um, decent, uh, sound, and yeah, I think this track is overall pretty good. Okay, so... I enjoy pretty much everything about this song. I really love the beat. Um, it has a very heavy bass line that kind of fuses with the 808s to make, give it like a really booming, powerful sound. And then like the bright synths that kind of pop in and out just add a nice contrast. And I really love this beat. And it has some of the most composed flows I've ever heard from Playboy Cardi. Some of the most understandable lyrics, no baby voice, which I really appreciate. And he even defends mumble rap in a few lines, which I don't think I've ever heard. I mean, I'm sure it's been done, I just forget. And I mean, I say defend, all it really, all he says is, I made a mill off this mumbling shit, and I bought a crib from a mom off this mumbling shit. But still, that's a little bit of substance. He's actually standing up for mumble rappers saying, yeah, we don't care what you think we're still making money 
And yeah, overall, this is probably my favorite and only Playboy Cardi song that I really love. Hop on top, I wanna ride, I do a giggle, I'm kinda wild, look at my mouth, look at my thighs, it's water is wet, come take a dive, tie me up like I'm surprised. This song is a guilty pleasure of mine. Now, really, the only reason why this song is on here is because I was dumbfounded, okay? I was truly shocked when I heard this song and didn't find Cardi B's voice unimaginably horrible. I think she has one of the most annoying voices in rap. And the fact that this song, she actually sounded fine over, that's really the only reason why it's on here. And I mean, it's got a nice beat and everything, and it's a, it's a good enough song. And I'm also not really a fan of Megan Thee Stallion. Don't get me wrong, I respect her and everything, I'm just not in the right demographic for her music. And I think she killed this song, so yeah. Two rappers, one that I hate and one that I feel indifferent about, making a fire song. Hey, why not? Hit the Gucci store and make you mad, man. Pop the box of rape and trying to bribe, bribe. Uh, suicide, don't suicide, yeah. Now, Supreme Patty is known for a lot of things, and music isn't really one of them, and it's for a good reason. Most of his music is just god-awful. He uses a heavily auto-tuned style of delivery that is just dreadful. Some of the most generic lyrics. It's just pretty bottom-of-the-barrel level. And it's one of those cases where it's a really trash artist that just somehow makes it work. Um, his delivery is pretty catchy on here. The melodies are pretty catchy. And yeah, that's about all I got to say. It's a trash rapper somehow making it work for a single song. My chick from Bel Air, my whip from Germany. I'm cooler than LL. I got my nigga like Pat Kate. My issue with Kodak Black is his very unique voice. He has this very strange babyish tone and like really slurred voice in his delivery. And I don't find that appealing at all. And on this song, it's not as noticeable, which, um, his voice isn't as prominent, it's kind of more nestled into the beat, so his voice isn't really on top. And the beat has, like, this really playful, playground, elementary kind of sound to it, where his kind of baby-style delivery really fits in nicely to make a fun banger. Hey, don't watch me fall. Hey, we got a two-for-one special today. Now, Watch Me Fall is a very atmospheric, vibey track. Um, most of the lyrics center around Don't Watch Me Fall Down. That's most of the lyrics, and it's he's using a very auto-tuned delivery, and it works very well. I really enjoy the sound, the, the melodies, and the track kind of hits hard when it came out when Lil Zane was going through a very dark time, and it was honestly very concerning what was going on with him at the time, which kind of adds to the track, and you could hear his voice breaking in it like he's breaking down and it's one of his most lyrically consistent tracks it's one of his biggest issues is with the songs of lyrics all over the place and this is one of his most consistent songs and then XOXO again um that's not his track that's just um he added a verse it's actually Jumex's track it just featured Lil Xan and it shows some of his most competent singing vocals that I've heard from him. And it doesn't really sound as much auto-tune either. So that's just natural singing, which I can really appreciate. And again, it's another pretty consistent verse. Lyrically, he's not all over the place. And yeah. Those are two tracks by Lil Xan where his voice actually sounds really nice on. Who would have thought it? Nowadays I get what I want. Lately been spinning up bad. I did it to get in that cat. I did it to pop in them tanks. Money was made for the sad. Now my ex was calling back. Saw me come up out the random. With this track, it's all the beat. I love this beat. Which I all which I'm kind of a sucker for these oriental beats. I really love them. Um 
there's they're not that common so it's always uh, kind of rare to hear but i just absolutely love these types of beats and i can appreciate ian dior not sounding like juice world which is one of my biggest issues with his music is him sounding a lot like juice world to me so yeah that's all i have to say about this track i had to get this shit off of my chest that bitch on a bottle suit dress yeah fucking with a bitch on the jet i had to get this shit off of my chest now, I chose this track for a couple reasons. One, it has Smoke Perp and Lil Pump, which Lil Pump I was a fan of, though I feel like his music has been getting worse and worse as time goes on. And Smoke Perp i would never been much of a fan of, but again, he's in the same boat. His music keeps getting worse and worse. But somehow, whenever these two guys get together, they always pull it off. I think every time Lil Pump and Smoke Perp have collaborated, it's been a banger. And it's kind of frustrating to see because Smoke Perp can make bangers. It's just so many times his songs are just flops for me. So it it's kind of frustrating to know an artist can make great bangers, but most of the time they just fall short. And it's just frustrating to be honest. Of my teeth on my head got infections and all of my gums after i couldn't get hard because the vodka and porno sedated me till i was numb after i couldn't escape from the basement i rented and went to go live with my mom after i cheated on people i needed and lied trying to hide from the guy that i was then i got sober the madness was over now i am proud of the man i became so we have not one but two tom mcdonald songs taking the number one spot now i wish the whole message of i wish is about loss of innocence and wishing you could go back to being a child when things were simpler. Which isn't the most in-depth message, but it's definitely one that a lot of people can relate to. You know, as a kid you're like, oh man, I can't wait to grow up and be an adult, because I just can I can do whatever I want. And then once you actually become an adult, you realize, hmm, being an adult fucking sucks. So and it's also a rare example of not just a good, but a great chorus from Tom McDonald. It fits the song well. The production isn't off. Um, the mixing and mastering isn't off. And it has a very, very grand feeling to it. So, yeah, it's an actual good chorus from Tom McDonald. Who thought it could be done? Now, Sober has a much more serious meaning. Um, the chorus on Sober is okay. Not good. Not bad. It's just okay. But the whole message and Tom McDonald's verse is really it's it, it he gives the most personal information that he's ever given he opened this is the first song where he's really opened up and he raps about his past experiences with drugs and alcohol and him getting sober and a large portion of Tom McDonald's fan base are older people who could very well be going through the same things and the song could be used as encouragement for his older fans to really push and work toward getting over addiction and becoming sober. And it's really sad, to be honest, because when Tom McDonald's not obsessed with being controversial, not obsessed with being fake deep or chasing some kind of crazy conspiracy, he can make amazing music. He can make legitimately powerful and moving music when he's not obsessed with being controversial. And unfortunately, that's the side of Tom McDonald we see the most. If he would just make songs about personal experiences and more powerful, meaningful messages instead of the fake, deep, woke messages or the controversial stuff, Tom McDonald could be a great rapper. And I just feel there's so much wasted potential when he chooses to continue to make songs like People So Stupid or Straight White Male or Cloned Rappers or any of his other fake, deep, controversial songs. So yeah, that about wraps up this video. Um, if you liked the video, make sure to like, subscribe, share it with your friends. It really helps me out a lot. Um, I dropped an album about a week ago called Mixed Emotions. You can find that on my SoundCloud. Really appreciate you guys checking that out. And, uh, yeah.
This is Soul Singed. Peace.